All right. So this camera stops every like 28-ish minutes. Mm. And so we'll kind of like break real quick, wrap up our thought, because that yes. camera will still be going. This will be going. And then I'll go reset it. We'll come back in. Yeah, combo. cut. Cool. Cut, mm -hmm. paste, pause, play, all the different DVR buttons. Yeah. I don't know why I expected you to rhyme, but... <laughs> Yeah, I, I could have, but I think that's what you expected. So therefore, I had to do something different. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. If I, if I were to rhyme, then you'd be like, oh, I knew you were gonna rhyme. But right, keep them on their toes. Keep them guessing, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Create Yourself Podcast. Today, we have none other than Jesse, aka Jesse Brownies, aka the founder and owner and creator of. You and I, T.Y. Yeah. Formerly known as Brownies. Um, yes. And then AKA, do you have any other AKAs that you go by? Not really. No. no. I don't no. think so. I think that's about it. What, what, what did your mom call you? Jessica. Jessica. That's my real name. Really? Sh don't tell anybody. Sh should we bleep it out or should we leave it in? You can leave it in. Okay. Are but real? just know if you come at me with Jessica... <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll be a little shocked at first. Can you can you imagine someone walking up to you like, "Hey Jessica, I saw your podcast," and, and you're like, like, "Who are you? Wait a minute, <laughs> how do you know me?" <laughs> okay, yeah. cool, cool. All right, so why why did you choose why did you choose the name Jesse? That's such a good question because I think it was just chosen for me. Mm. I think um, somebody used to sing Jesse's Girl a lot to mm. me. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, sure. I'll, yeah. I'll go with it. Oh, uh, sure. Sure. Why yeah. not? And then later on in life, brownies came from your last name, Brown. Yeah. And Jesse Brown was sense. taken. Uh, so and then was, you, it just you just occurred to you to be like, brownies? Yeah. I was like, that's not too far off. Mm. And nobody had it. So yeah. I was like, okay. No, it's super, it, like, it works perfectly, but it's like, wow. I, I feel like not a lot of last, like, people have the last name Brown. Oh, I feel like I, you so feel like many. I'm wrong. Because mm. a lot of times I'm like, ugh, I want to change my last name because it's so common. Mm. Jessica Brown is very common, I feel like. I feel like I don't know anybody with the last name Brown. You've met really? another Jessica Brown? Yes. And mm. like uh, actual, like met her in, in real in life. In life. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. Was she cool? Yeah, she was pretty cool. She mm. was just kind of like. Chill. Regular, regular, but regular, like, regular, yeah. You know, <laughs> but she, she was representing well for the Jesse Browns. Out there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So she Jessica, didn't go by Jesse though. She, she went, went by, by Jessica. Jessica. Yeah. Okay, so it's different. Yeah. Yeah. And then you add the E's, brownies to the end of it, and then you have a, a full alias. That's, uh, yeah. You can leave the country, <laughs> be a completely different person, be famous somewhere else, and right. do your thing. Yeah. I wanted for a while to use my mom's last name, which is Lucky. Dang, you just got some cool ass last name. Lucky is. A very cool last name. And so when I turned 18, I was like, okay, I'm going to be Jesse Lucky. Mm. And I was going to go legit change my name. Mm -hmm. But I was like, ah, it's too much pressure. Yeah. Everyone knows me now. Yeah. Brown, You've so. already built that up. And then it's like, how do you go about changing it? And right. They'd be like, who weird. is that? Yeah. Who is Jesse Lucky? It's a complete rebrand. All of a sudden, it's just like, this isn't brownies anymore. It's Lucky's. And right. Like, it will work with it, we'll work. but I, it's new. I'm a little used to something else, but I, sure, I, I can get accustomed to it. Yeah. You know? Okay, cool. So now that we know where the origin of your name came from, tell us a little bit about you. So, I mean, mainly we'll get into other, some other things that you do in life mm -hmm. um, outside of dance, but a lot of people know you for dance. They know you for your team, Unity. Um, so tell us a little bit about, like, your dance journey. Like, how did, how did you get into dance? Ooh. I, I mean, I did the little like tap jazz mm -hmm. ballet as like a two, I think I was three when mm. I started, um, wasn't a huge fan of those. Mm. So I didn't want to do that. I think I did. So I did soccer instead mm. for a while. Okay. Um, and then That's why she got the footwork. Yeah. A little bit, a <laughs> little, <laughs> little scissor kick. Yeah. You know, um, but I think when I was eight, I was really into like watching music videos, mm. um, especially like Sierra. Yeah. Um, I was just like, whoa. I definitely remember Sierra being like a huge aha moment. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like. Like click for you. Yeah. Cause she just like, like really danced in her videos. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a little like cute, right. like 
Britney Spears moment. Yeah, she's she's going in. Choreography. Yeah. Yes. And um so a lot of times like I would like try to learn dances from music videos. Mm. Um or just like make my own dances and like show my family yeah. in the living room. And I would force all my friends to learn dances that I made up. <laughs> and um You were that person. Yes. And I was like, okay, the town show's coming up. Yeah. So I have a piece ready. Don't okay. y'all worry. Okay. Uh, rehearsal Tuesday, Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> she was uh, from the jump. You were already like this. It was just destined that you were gonna have a team to do this. Later. Right, right. right. <laughs> now that I think about it, yeah. Hey, dog. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think when I was, I think nine, ten. Uh, my friend was like, "Hey, I go to like hip hop classes. Mm. Um, you should come." And I was like, "Whoa." I'm not that good, yeah. but she like kind of persuaded me to go. Um, Jeff Hampton, I don't know if mm. you know him. Mm -mm. He's on the uh, Mavericks team now. Then I might know him. So you might know, and you do b-boy. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, but he was my first hip hop teacher ever. Shout out. <laughs> um, and so I would just go in, take classes all the time, and I would like go home and work on them. Mm. And then I would come to class so annoying, and I'd be like, I made a piece, I want to <laughs> see it. <laughs> I was just like really, really passionate yeah. about it. Um, did private lessons for a while. Mm. Um, and then that's when I just, I really started to like get into training mode. Yeah, <laughs> and you already know that training arc. Yeah. Like what, like conventions, classes, as much as you can just like absorb, right? All of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. But for a while, I wasn't good at the taking class thing. Mm. I was like, uh, I have ADD really bad. Mm. And so I, uh, I, would, I wouldn't be able to like focus mm -hmm. on the piece. Right. Or if I had it, it would just leave my brain. And I'd be yeah. like, oh. I get that. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but I think once I started to get a little older and just like go to classes on my own mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, pay for studio memberships yeah. on my own and all that. I was like, I'm all gonna right. get this. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm yeah. here to learn. Right. So how did, how did you get over that that initial bump of like blanking out in classes or not being good at classes? Because I feel like that's a very common thing. Oh, yeah. And it's very like, especially if you start dancing outside of the studio. Right. And then you get 100%. in there and there's a bunch of people and you're all trying to learn the same thing in sometimes 30, 35 minutes, and then groups yep. after that. Yep. It can, it's like a whole sport on its own. Right, it's right. It's different than just like um, freestyling, which is also a whole sport on its yeah, own. Yeah, They all sure. have different structures. Definitely. And so you can be like a phenomenal dancer, period, but then to gather somebody else's moves and then right. make it work with your own style. Mm -hmm, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. It'll take time. Yeah. Um, but I definitely would like take stuff home mm. and like wouldn't leave something like uh like unpolished or unfinished. Yeah. 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 I'd be like, oh I didn't get it. Yeah. Well I gotta get it. Right. You know, before awesome. I go to the next one. Yeah. So um if people are like like I have a private later today actually mm. we were this um uh, one of my students was just talking about that, and I was like, "Don't ever leave a piece, right? Not how you wanted yeah. to do it." Mm -hmm. um, so, I think I think yeah. that's such an important part of the training because it's like you know you go into a lecture, you know, like mm -hmm. to a class and learning something, and and sometimes it's very hard to absorb everything the teacher or lecturer is saying. You might get bits and pieces of it, and then say like you have a pop quiz and you get like a sixty seventy on it, right? But it's up to you to go home and be like, "What did I miss? You know, yeah. where can I improve? How can I get that?" 100% right um, and I think that if more people did that and they thought about it like that where it's like I didn't come to class just to show out like I've come to class to learn and for this to be something that brings me home homework right you know yeah yeah um, one of my um, unity mm -hmm. people well, she's actually like my manager now her mm. name's Jasmine oh yeah Jazz yeah Jazz, Jazz. Jazz. girl you know Jazz yeah Jazz Choreo block. Come on. I always forget little connections Come on. there. <laughs> uh, Jasmine, she she would always be like, yeah, I took this piece home and I put like ankle weights on and mm. wrist weights on and like worked on it. And I'd be like, whoa. Uh, She's a G. Yeah. She's a G. I, I've heard a lot. Of, like, uh, I don't think Jazz and I have really ever like sat down and had a conversation, but I've like seen her through, you know, dancing and mm -hmm. and heard about her through a lot of other people. But I know that for her, it's like, 
she she like just skyrocketed yeah. so quick but it makes sense because like she was like serious committed and, like For i sure. will get better literally mm. and yeah that actually was a beginning start to like this whole group that really we formed because tell me about it okay <laughs> all right let's get into it let's get into um it. like because my first year of choreo block or i think it was my second season mm. that's when i um well i've actually been teaching regularly since i was 17 mm. mm -hmm. um but 18 is when I, like, was really building, like, my slot and, like, right. really trying to, like, get people. Right. And so Coil Block was, like, a huge resource I was using. I was like, hey, if anyone wants to come Definitely. take my class. Yeah, like, for sure. Please come through. <laughs> I teach on this day yes. every time. <laughs> every time. It hasn't changed. It's consistent. <laughs> um, so uh, I would invite everyone all the time and, like, Jasmine mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, Johnny even and Sierra. Shout out, Johnny. Yeah. Shout out all those people. They were always like so about it. Whatever. Yeah. If they just wanted to learn something I was working on, they'd be like, mm. yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of times I'd be like, hey, if y'all want to go to this battle, hey. um, come through. And it was kind of just like a smaller group of people yeah. that were down to do like the extra stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was kind of like, I want to like get make this a group mm -hmm. of people that are like really down to train all realms instead yeah. of uh just doing a set right because i did that forever like uh competition teams yep. and yep. performance teams yep. and there's nothing wrong yeah, with any of that yeah yeah and there's nothing wrong with working every can i cuss yeah okay yeah, for sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> no okay please refrain <laughs> i was about to say working everyone's butt off um like there's nothing wrong with everyone working their ass off yeah. um on a set and then like bringing that product to yeah. people yeah absolutely but i think for a while i kind of felt like you know i've done sets so long mm -hmm. and it's always we do a set and then the season's over yep we work on it for months and i'm like damn yeah i kind of wanted to like session session with yeah, y'all yeah. and keep it going yeah uh go do stuff together and so i kind of like found a group that was really down to do like kind of the extra awesome. stuff and i was like i don't think uh dallas has like a training team mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. where it's just that yeah um like no pressure on performances or right. competitions right. but like we're just kind of building ourselves as like an individual mm -hmm. um so kind of like an anti-team yeah <laughs> yeah for sure that, that, that's that was the coolest part about seeing like how it formed as brownies you mm -hmm. know because it was so different, and I, but, I, but I feel like it was so needed, you know, in Dallas. Like, I think everywhere needs a training team mm -hmm. to really build up those fundamentals and yeah. um, just really just start dancing outside of competition. Mm -hmm. um, I think competition is great, but to train because of the, the love of dance and wanting to get better at it is something that's super cool and super powerful that that's awesome that you started. Thank you. Yeah. It, it kind of all like made sense as it was happening. Mm. And I was just like, ooh. Let's y'all yeah. down. Okay. Let's, let's make it happen. It. And I was like, whoever is on it is on it. Yeah. I just kind of had like a select people. I, I saw that mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. and then I kind of just opened it up to whoever uh. was down and then boom. And so it's crazy because, you know, all these things that we see now that have grown to be pretty large mm -hmm. and, and, and really impactful. It all started from just someone just being like, this would be so cool. Hey, are you guys down to do this? Right. Oh, shit. All right, you down? Okay, let's get it started, you know? Yeah. So, like, I, this is a, a question that I want to ask. As you created the team, and obviously this was an idea, and then you created the vision, and then it, you made it happen, mm -hmm. what were some things that you didn't foresee happening? Or you're like, oh, shoot, I didn't think about that. Like, that maybe happened. Ooh, so many. Mm. It's been such a learning experience. Um... I think there's always like a power dynamic thing mm. when you're teaching because I have such a wide range of uh, ages mm -hmm, mm -hmm, on my team. Mm -hmm. So I ended up opening it up for like uh, 16 mm -hmm. and up. Mm -hmm. And so I had anywhere from 16 to uh, like 30 mm. or mm -hmm. 29, 30. Mm -hmm. And I remember being like, there has to be kind of a sense of trust that they 
even if I'm younger right. or the same age yeah. or just a little bit older, right. um, that they see me as somebody that can help them. Right. And like, yeah. I was kind of nervous about that at first. For sure. And then I was like, well, as long as it's like I stay true to myself of how I would want to be led, mm. it, it always kind of just works out because I've had a lot of leaders um, and I've seen a lot of leaders in many yeah, different areas definitely. and I can kind of see, ooh, I can kind of <laughs> see like um, what what works for the most part, what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And but also in a sense of like uh, a certain leader can work with a certain type of student, but then not a different type of student. Right. And so I think just the group that happened naturally was down with how I yeah. teach and everything so that's su that's super important i think leadership is really complex in that way because mm -hmm. you don't just have one type of person that you're teaching or leading it's like when you're a leader you have to lead so many different types of people right to do it efficiently yes you know because you can you can stick to your own you know ways but if if person a learns different from person b and you want both of them to succeed you as a leader have to cater the ways that you like to teach right right and so you said you learned that from like watching different leaders mm -hmm. yeah so many teachers because i would always go to like conventions and stuff and they were mm. people from around the world and somebody would say something in a way i've never heard before yeah and i'd be like wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> what huh or then somebody would be like really uh intense out of nowhere and i'm be like oh i'm not used to that right but i like it mm. but i see people in the room that are not mm. that's not they're not mm -hmm. taking it well mm -hmm. um so and then also like teaching kids has been a huge uh like learning curve mm. for me mm -hmm. because i started teaching adults right like when i was 17 18 mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. were like way older than me right. and then now i'm i'm 23 and i'm teaching anywhere from like five to mm, wow however old yeah right um and so teaching kids is like been really great to also have like throughout mm, the week mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um because they learn in a whole completely different way for sure yeah yeah and you have to be kind of even extra careful because they're still growing mm -hmm. and like these are the years they're going to decide well do i want to do this or do i not right. want to do this right um and and you have to kind yeah. of cater the way that you really speak because mm, kids are yeah. just they don't speak in the language that or in the ways that we do that ma that maturity level like all, all walks of life it's just very different right right because i remember teaching uh when i taught gymnastics and i was teaching little kids how to do gymnastics and okay. flips and stuff yeah you also have to like bottle their excitement like be excited with them mm -hmm. but also help like navigate that excitement yes to focus yeah because you know kid like, they just ah, ah, they get so excited and you have to like be there to help guide them but not like be so like down on them where they're right. just like i don't like miss jesse like, right you know what I'm i saying? don't like this i don't <laughs> like what's I'm, happening i don't want to ever come back <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've seen that many times too yeah um and so i think yeah that has helped a lot even with like adults because mm. i don't know i don't know why but there's usually like connections in some way definitely um but yeah that's awesome and so mm -hmm. now so now you teach like a, a wide range of ages people mm -hmm. people coming from like probably different styles um different walks of life yes um, for you specifically i know that you are always like continuously learning and expanding your own skill set what is something mm -hmm. that uh you've recently learned about yourself uh in relation to dance oh good question mm. um i think Personally, mm. I have struggled a lot with balancing like freestyle mm. versus battling versus choreographing versus taking class versus teaching yeah. versus directing. There's like all those so, little. <laughs> yeah, so many different ones. Yeah, and my mind has to go somewhere else for each of those. Mm. And so I think kind of finding the right space for each is like still a learning process yeah. because I could be at a battle and I'm still in choreography mode of like getting stuff done and mm -hmm, pushing moves mm -hmm. out, pushing choreography out for deadlines. And then I, 
I'm kind of like in like a mental block. Yeah. Just like gymnasts. If yeah. they have a mental block. Absolutely. It's no good. No bueno. Mm-mm. Nothing's happening. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I'm kind of learning how to like create a safe space for each, no matter, no matter the environment. Mm, that's yeah. freaking hard. Oh, yeah. To really just like you're compartmentalizing these these certain aspects of your life because and you're also like growing them. Mm-hmm. These are like these are things that you're constantly like working on and improving, and like you're having to be like, okay, here, save point. Okay, right, yeah. Now I need to move here, and I need to move here. Like, mm-hmm. how do you? One, how did you realize that you needed to do that? Um, just kind of the whole uh, burnt out thing for sure, mm. because I teach every day. Usually, except Sundays. Wow. Sundays are usually free, but then if I have a gig, I have a gig or yeah, whatever. right, right. But I usually teach like every day. Wow. And so I had to find a way to like find some switch. Yeah. Because if there's, if I teach five hours and then I go to a battle, mm-hmm. I have to find some way yeah. to switch it up. Yeah, for sure. Or, or go to a session. Mm-hmm. That's always really hard mm-hmm. because session is, sessions are about just dancing right like but also just doing whatever you're wanting to work on right, at that point point. Right. and so sometimes i'd be in like go mode and i'm mm, i see you know what i mean yeah absolutely and so i have to find a way to like calm down or right. just be in the moment yeah. not think about oh i have to get this done later tonight or right. tomorrow morning or whatever oh, yeah um, but that's kind of what people struggle with in all realms of life is sure. just like being present so learning process yeah no that's it's it's such a hard thing because i mean you have so most people have like so many things to worry about in their life right like say you're you want to dance in the morning and then you want to like you said like go to a battle that evening but Mm -hmm. then you also have someone who just told you about um, a new contract that you can get or a new gig that you can you can get on to and you're like all these things it's like trying to understand that maybe not all of them are urgent at Mm -hmm. the moment and really separating yourself from each one of those things but that takes a lot of like awareness and a lot of time with yourself to really just yes. sit down and be like, what do I want? Like, what do I want to do? And mm-hmm. then based upon that, then I can actually move around my mind and move around my schedule. You know? Right. Yeah. Because realistically, the things you are passionate about the most, things are going to work out. For sure. But when you start to... When that passion starts dropping, mm-hmm. whether it's like you're overworked mm-hmm. or you're losing inspiration or whatever, mm-hmm. or even just like not a great environment. Yeah. Like, let's say it's a job, a teaching job, and they're just not treating yep. you right. Yep. Um, then things are going to start to fumble mm-hmm. because you're not, those aren't the things you're wanting to do. Right. So you have to, that's another thing is uh, learning that things are temporary mm. and there's so many different realms you can go into you don't have to do one thing forever right that's another thing right you don't you don't have to stick with something just because you it interests you or you put x amount of time into it you you should have the ability to say you know like this is not for me right now in this life i'm cool to come back to it eventually but right now i'm gonna just leave this here Mm -hmm. and move to this other thing that's really calling me but it's always so hard because of those um maybe commitments or or things that you have to do that yes. maybe don't feel good to you and your passion, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I really want to ask that with dance because I know there are a lot of people who want to have some type of um, art form as their career. And that can always get so difficult because like you said about mm-hmm. burnout and what what if all of a sudden you got this gig and it pays you great money, it's, it's awesome, but they're assholes and yeah. you hate it. And all of a sudden you question your love for dancing. Like, Mm-hmm. So for you, I'm sure you've had those moments where you were put into a situation that conflicted with your love of dance and something that you really didn't want to do, but maybe you needed to do. Like, how yeah. did you handle that? Ooh, I still go through that because mm. not the head scratch. <laughs> <laughs> that was so like cartoony. <laughs> um, I think it's just. Sometimes, um, like your business side, Mm -hmm. like there's going to be like little bumps, Mm -hmm. but sometimes it's not worth it to just stick to something because 
like you made a commitment or mm. money mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. whatever right. it is like it it's not worth it so if you break a little business relationship mm. um then that's what like you sometimes be. you have to like be okay with that yeah 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 um because things are just we're like beating you down or yeah. um you just weren't getting treated right right and let's say you have to find somebody else to take over mm-hmm. or go do something else for a minute mm-hmm. that's not going to make the other person happy because you made this commitment right but what if you're not being bringing your best self mm. to that job or right. whatever absolutely that's not fair to them yeah and it's definitely not fair to you right so sometimes you just have to like mm. find that balance mm-hmm. and always find a way to come back to that happy place yeah happy place that, that yeah. like reminder of like why you're doing these things yeah. in the first place because you know along the way you, these relationships and things i mean as a person we wish that we could just have and maintain like a good energy and a good flow but Oftentimes we have to interact with so many other people with so many different mm. energies. Oh yeah, that can really just like <sighs> make you feel uneasy. And yeah. it's like learning to be like, okay, it, is this worth my time? And is it like tainting my energy too much mm-hmm. to where I need to say, I'm gonna go ahead and and kind of end this for my own, which is difficult because it feels probably against your nature to have right. to. I need to do and end this for myself, and I might look like an asshole, but. Mm-hmm. I have to do this. And some right. people are just not going to understand that. Yeah. Which is okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's all it's all about learning about how to navigate life and, and people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And definitely keeping that... Staying... I know it's so cliche, but <laughs> staying true to yourself. For sure. Um, but in a way that's like, no matter the environment you're in, mm-hmm. Or what's what negativity is around you or problems right. are around you or energies, like you said, are around you. You know who you are and you know yeah. why you're there. And it can be really hard to keep that, like, right secure. Yeah. But that's definitely something I'm working on, yeah. for sure. Because I'm wanting to go. I've been in Dallas my whole life, girl. Mm. And I'm wanting to definitely go to L.A. for a bit. Wow, yeah. Um, And then New York for a bit yeah. in July. Yeah. Yeah. And um, just kind of, I've never seen like other communities, mm, like for a long so amount awesome. of time. Yeah. And so I think that'll be something really worth setting my commitments aside. For sure. <laughs> and just like taking a jump. Definitely. Going to do it. Because I think at the same time, you know, you're one person. You know, you're, right. you're doing a lot to really uplift the community, a lot for other people and their growth. And although you want to stay committed to that, like you said, right? Mm-hmm. You can't be the best version of yourself if you're not taking that time for yourself. Yeah. Hey, Google, stop. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ooh. No. <laughs> we back. And we back. And we back. And we back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of good. Yeah, that was kind of good. Yeah. Hey guys, you want to hop on the track? Sure. Hey, being real? Or are you, is, this, is this just for the podcast? <laughs> hey, I'm always down. I don't have the best voice. But All right, you heard it I here first. Bars. Don't worry. Very soon we'll have a feature, Project Nate featuring none other than Brownies. Oh, what, what would be what would be your what would be your your name? What would you go by, Jessica? Oh, uh, hail to the no, Jessica Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I went through the same thing with like my, my battle name. Mm. I'm like I kind of just prefer Jesse. Yeah, just call me Jess. As long as Jessie. there's no others around. Yeah. I'll just keep it that way. Yeah. If there's no other Jesse. Right. But if anything, you'll go by brownies? I don't... I mean, some people just say that. Yeah. But I'm like, eh. It doesn't feel like you. Yeah, maybe... I don't know. Yeah. Makes sense. The oven. The... (laughs) (laughs) Moving on. (laughs) Brownies! Please, no... (laughs) 350 degrees. Ooh. Get it. You know. Hey, there's full hundred already. <laughs> Just down a down a notch is 350. We might have stumbled across <laughs> something. We might, we just might have. Right. 375? 375. Does that ring as well as 350? 375. 350. I like 350. Yeah. 350 it's more like nice. 
Yeah, like three fifty. Yeah, because then it's like three seventy five. You're like, dang, that's like a, that's long, a lot. Like, 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 oh my god, it's water. You know, <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> exhausted. <laughs> oh, girl. Uh, Anywho, okay. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're talking about like you going off and doing things for yourself, so you can recharge, mm-hmm. right? Like you, you going to New York, you going to LA, and really experimenting and exploring. I think that will also show a lot of people that you teach and and that know you, hey, maybe this is something that you guys should explore too, mm-hmm. right? Because maybe a lot of people are reliant on you for their growth. And Ooh. you can get to that place, right? Mm-hmm. Where you're like, oh, this is my mentor. This, my, But what if that person leaves? Right. You got to be responsible for your own growth and, and seek that elsewhere. Yes. Yeah. That's actually a huge thing like I, I push for on Unity or on mm-hmm. Brownie mm-hmm. Seasons is i'm like i feel like in the past sometimes i was like really encouraged to come back for auditions mm, like make sure you mm-hmm. auditions and make sure you right, do this. Right. And, and i would never hear like uh promotions for outside things yeah, outside of the team it's a good point and so um i kind of wanted to make it a thing like hey make sure y'all are going to this mm-hmm, workshop that mm-hmm, this team is hosting mm-hmm. or this uh battle that this yeah um you know, battlegrounds or whatever. And um, I think it's important to realize like people are going to come to train what they want to train. Right. And they're going to take that and then run with it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the whole point, really. Right, for sure. And it's great that you you really, you're not owning these people. I think that, 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 that can be a very big thing, you know, whenever you have a team or whatever it might be, like to be like, this is my team. Don't go anywhere else. But then it's like, you don't want to have that relationship with your team. You want right. to be, you want to keep it open and be like, do whatever you want. Like it's mm-hmm. it's your life. You know, yeah. you don't owe anything to me. <laughs> and everyone, this group, I have to brag about them for a second. Mm. Each season, each season has been a different group. Yeah. But as a collective, everyone is so amazing in their mm. own ways. Mm. It's not like we're all trying to look the same mm. or trying to be the same mm. or whatever. Mm. Everyone's just kind of, great in mm. the, like their own beautiful ways yeah and so that's kind of something that always brings me back to do another season because i'm so like in awe of how true to themselves they are yeah and then they take that and then yeah. maybe all they needed is to some people just like need a team structure mm-hmm. to like keep themselves For motivated sure. and so sometimes i see like a certain dancer like a spark comes back and they're mm. like, I'm going to go freaking do something. Yeah. And do and did. Yeah. And um, that's always really, really great to see. Yeah. Um, and kind of like what what I've always felt I wanted to be as a director mm. is just kind of like encouraging what's already there. Mm. And mm. kind of if because everyone wants to do hip hop on the team. Right. So that's one thing that's structured is like. We're going to build up your uh, hip hop knowledge and fundamentals, mm-hmm. all that. Mm-hmm. But also like, hey, what you got, let's take that yeah. and believe in it. Yeah. And I, I think that's, yeah. that's that's a very great quality of a leader is mm-hmm. to look at your team, look at the people on your team and say, what are you great at or what are you good at? And what can how can we make this great? Mm-hmm. You know, it's taking those pre-existing things and also working on, you know, those weaknesses that they have and saying like, those don't have to be your weaknesses anymore, but always play to your strengths because mm-hmm. I think sometimes you get into a mode of like, oh, like I suck at this, I'm sucking at this. And you get so focused on building this thing up that you forget what you're actually already naturally or what you've already built up in the first place that can add on to this other weakness, right? And right. build that up. Yeah, that's real. You know. Yes. You know. Yeah, it took, it took a while for me to... Um, have a leader that kind of didn't want me to do the choreography like everybody else. Mm. And I remember I, uh, shout out to Kevin Middleton. Middleton. Oh. Yeah. He was kind of like, my life. <laughs> <laughs> cause a lot of times like I would be too like, mm, like mm, bouncy mm-hmm. and people were like, stop. <laughs> cause it was a very like, like, sharp 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 tiki tiki era Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i was trying like really hard to be that Mm. but i think it wasn't until i saw him like 
teaching his amazing classes yeah. and like really working on hip hop fundamentals. And yeah. he was a huge inspiration in that way. Yeah. And then um, he kind of was just like, nah, do do what you're doing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. Heard. Um, and yeah. Ke- Kevin is one of those people. Like when I was on the process, that man, the way he led that team, the way that he um, believed in people, the way that he push people and their strengths like he had people who had no dance experience on that team what no dance experience at all on that team that's and, crazy and everyone was sharp everyone was there yeah like, but it was awesome as well because he always pushed us to to just be ourselves mm-hmm. and nobody else right and that above anything was very like great to hear you know because a lot of people are like i want you have to look like this yeah but for him it was like okay let me see how you are what can I do with you? Like, like how, how can we really push you to be the best version of you? And to have that type of leader, it's like transformational in your mind yeah. because you see the growth that not only you endure, but like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Right. I remember that watching you guys <laughs> on stage and I was, everyone was like. Right, that was crazy. Yeah. I, 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 rem- I still remember there was, uh, hopefully I can tell this story. Maybe I'll ask Kevin if I can, but okay. this world of dance judge had come into the studio before. Um, and he, I, I guess they're just like checking out the teams, making sure everyone's like valid. Like mm-hmm. they're actually dancing. And when they show up, they're an actual team or something. Yeah. Um, and I think we had done like a piece or we done a part of the set. Maybe we were just like rehearsing. Um, and you know, we gathered around so he could give his feedback or, or advice before we go on stage. And, he kind of was talking about the formula and what everyone looks for and why it's important um, mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And as soon as he left, Kevin was like, fuck that. <gasps> <laughs> and, and he was like, he was like, we're not going on that stage to win. Yeah. We're not going on that stage to be whoever. We're not trying to be anybody. We created something and that's what we're going to show. So whether or not people like it, that's none of their business. Like we're not wow. here for a, a, a criteria. We're not here for a rubric. We're here to be ourselves. And like, what i was like what yeah <laughs> fuck the system let's go <laughs> right fuck the system let's yeah. get on stage yeah that, that's that, crazy. That man is crazy that's such a beautiful thing to say in that moment because mm-hmm. yeah. everyone was like kind of stressing after the dude left like oh fuck like we ain't got a piece like this right like, we, 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 we're not a, and he was like hey fuck that and yeah like, really <laughs> tell what why? why why should we just fuck that like that's that's the dude but He's he's amazing. Yeah. And he's doing some cool things too. Shout out. Shout out my boy Kevin Middleton. In New York. In New York. <laughs> Come back to Dallas for a little bit and hit me up. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that'd be cool to have you on the podcast if you want to get on the podcast. Oh, you should get him. He'd be a great person. Oh, he would be awesome. Yeah. And so, okay. So let's talk about this. Okay. Now that you're very ingrained in the Dallas scene, you've expressed that you want to explore New York, mm. explore in LA. Do you ever think that you would go and be somewhere else for a long period of time and maybe not leave Dallas, but leave Dallas? It's a difficult answer mm-hmm. because I've kind of strayed away from planning anything mm. because I don't know until I'm there or until I have this uh, random opportunity or I'm in this space. Yeah. Um, So I don't know. Yeah. I couldn't tell you. I got to go first and see. How? Yeah. Um, I think it'd be really difficult to live somewhere else, Mm -hmm. but I definitely don't want to be here like. I kind of want to be a little nomad. Right, right. Yeah. Kind of really go and explore. And like like you mentioned, like just kind of open your horizons mm-hmm. and um, just gain new perspective. Right. You know, because I think when you're in a place for so long, it's amazing and you build mm-hmm. up a great community. But also that community is going to support you when you go somewhere else. And yeah, you're exploring and dancing because, I mean, that's that's what you want to do in life. Right. Yeah. And I think there's like when you think about it, like. I'm just in this little dot Mm -hmm. and it's been a great dot, Mm -hmm. but there's just so much much. in this world. There's so much to see. And so I, I just want to go and then just kind of see what happens. So I'm not like, Oh, I'm going to go move to LA. Cause I don't know how I will be there. Right. Um, 
And so, you, yeah. Yeah. You we'll just kind of want to explore, feel everything out until whatever, like you mentioned, like whatever calls your heart or your mm-hmm. energy towards it, you're going to know. Like it's going to be very apparent and very loud that you're like, oh. Right. I can't explain it, but this is where I have to be. Yes. You know? Yeah. And I hate to be that person, but everything does happen for a reason. That's true. And so, yeah, like I had this uh, job offer mm. to go to New Zealand for oh, a year. Wow. Really? Yeah. It was so random. I was like, me? Uh, Yeah. <laughs> but Down. I think it was because um, they closed for like the pandemic reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think they were letting people in from the oh, U.S. at the wow. time. Yeah. And that sucked. Yeah. Because I was so Dang, excited. I can imagine. <laughs> but I know that like there was a reason for that. Yeah. And since then, I had three seasons of this team. Yeah. And so that has been a great right. thing. Right. And think about how many people that's that's impacted, you yeah. know? like I suppose so. <laughs> Come on. I suppose It, it so. did. It did. <laughs> A lot of people, you know, I, I think that's that's a really great way to look at it because you could always get really down about those opportunities that fell through. But mm-hmm. in reality, those were to make room for something greater, you know, and, and everything seems great, right, at, at the at the moment that happens and that the opportunity is presented. But whatever path that you're supposed to be down, it was supposed to go that way and it was supposed to teach you something, right? you know, so whether yeah. that had been, hey, you're used to getting all the opportunities that you're given and I'm going to take this one away. Yeah. And you're like, what? I'm like, wait. <laughs> please, no. <laughs> please, <laughs> please, no. Please, I need this. I need this. And you're like, you don't need it. Get yeah. over it. Next. <laughs> yeah. And then you turn the corner and you're like, oh, oh shit. look at you, this great opportunity. You're saying you, bro, it's, it's, like, it's like having a nice car drive up and you're like, is that mine? They're like, no. And you get really upset and it drives away and there's a nicer car. And you're like, right. what the f-? Yeah. Yeah. It's everything you wanted. Everything. And, and everything that you didn't even know you wanted. Because I think yeah. sometimes those opportunities... Like I said, they feel so good. Like, this is what I want. This is what I need. But there's always something better that you actually were meant to have. Right. You know? Meant. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. What, what is one of your favorite philosophies of life? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Squid. <Dude. laughs> oh, that's, that's hard. Mm. Well, I think, can okay, I know yours for inspiration? Mm, mm. <laughs> I have, I feel like I have a, like a couple, one obviously is create yourself, Mm -hmm. um, which is pretty much just whatever you want to do, you got to do it. You know, you're the person in charge of creating yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like you're the person putting in the work to build that ideal self. You Mm -hmm. can't wait for it to happen. You can't wait for something else. And creativity is my movement and expression. So that's kind of like one of my biggest philosophies for life. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, Yeah. That's such a good one. That really is. Yeah, I got it. I got it tattooed, and I passed out doing the tattoo. So, <gasps> really, mm-hmm. where did you get a tattoo? I have it right here. Oh. I passed out when it got to E. Really? Blacked out. Done. Out. And they just Fell kept down. going. No. Nah. No. No. Nah, I. He, okay. To tell the story. Okay. <sighs> my ate from FSA was like, "Hey, I'm getting a tattoo today. You want to yeah. get a tattoo?" I was like, "Sure." I'll get a tattoo with you. Mm-hmm. And I go with her. This is when the pandemic was there. So no one else is allowed in the tattoo shop except for the tattoo artist and a person. Whoa. So I go there. I'm a little bit amped up because I don't even know what I'm actually going to get. But I stumbled across. It just said B, B-E uh-huh. in, this, in this font. But I was like, I feel like I want something different, like create yourself or something. So I got that. And then, you know, she, she gets her tattoo. She's in and out like 10 minutes. I was like, dang, that's fast. Sheesh. It's my first tattoo. Yeah. I go in. I'm like, hey, you know what's up? The guy's like tatted from head to toe. He's like six foot tall, spider webs across his face, everything. I'm like, this guy's cool. Spider webs, yeah. I sit in the chair, you know, I'm like, hey, just a question, because I'm not good with needles. I was mm. like, just a question, like, has anybody like ever like passed out or anything like that, like walking a tattoo? And he was like, I mean, normally it's people who are like super drunk or they haven't mm-hmm. eaten at all. And I was like, well, I'm sober and I definitely ate a great breakfast, so I should be fine. Right. So I sit down, you know, he's getting ready. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm talking to him. And then he goes, I'm like, wow, it really doesn't hurt. It, it doesn't feel like anything. He is to the E and I'm like, hey man, uh, real quick. He's like, you good? I was like, yeah, I'm just feeling a little hot. Blacked out, fell out of the chair. But yeah, I wake up, this man is like holding me. Dang. And he's like, here, here, eat the sugar cube, eat the sugar cube. And I'm eating the sugar cube. I'm like, what the f- is going on? 
And and then I sit back in the chair. I'm like sweating bullets, obviously. And then yeah. he's sitting there and he's just like, anxiety's a bitch, isn't it? And I was like, yeah. And then we had to talk about anxiety for 20 minutes. Yeah. He finished the rest of it and I was out. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. That would be me for sure. Yeah. But Do you have tattoos? probably no. For that reason. Are you scared of needles? I'm scared of many things. <laughs> We can talk about that. <laughs> Needles being one of, yeah, what, what is your biggest fear? Ooh. I like how we went from philosophy to yeah, biggest yeah, yeah. fear. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> All right, Wait, actually, before we go to fear, let's, let's bring back out philosophies. So yes. Yeah, come back out to, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think um, having the courage mm. to go outside of the herd is a mm. huge one. Speak on it. I say courage because it's not easy Mm. because nothing like, (laughs) let me rewind. Mm. Yeah. I say courage because it's not easy. Mm. Um, Following the herd is like almost in our nature, but more in a, in like a societal structure, Mm -hmm. but really to break like horrible habits of history, it just Mm. took courage. Mm. And so I think it's really important to, even in in small rooms or small yeah. situations, to be the person to, like, stand up for something yeah. or um, or even just have a new idea. That's yeah. another thing. Yeah. It can change so many things. That's real. And so I think it's important to not spend too much time just following what, everybody else is saying Mm. or what everybody else thinks is right Mm. or thinks is cool. Mm. Like take a minute to zoom out Mm. and be like, how do you in your heart, maybe even in your inner child, how do you feel about this? Yeah. Stick to that. Yeah. That's a great perspective because it Mm -hmm. goes back to like following your heart. Right. And I think courage in those situations is so hard. Mm -hmm. Like you said, because a lot of us want to fit in. A lot of us want to be accepted and understood, but sometimes to be yourself, it means that you won't be accepted and you won't be understood. Right. And to actually step out of that and say, for myself and for like my inner child, for the for the the little me inside that's like, please, like I need to be me. Like mm-hmm. you got to be like, I'm gonna do this for you. Like I, this is gonna be so uncomfortable. People may hate me. People may reject me. I may be alone, but mm-hmm. I owe it to myself. Right. You know. Yeah. I love that. Thanks. I love that. Thanks, mate. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's mm. what I was talking about just the other day. So it was kind of fresh in my mind. Yeah. It actually came because somebody was asking why I loved Hunger Games so much. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I really do love Hunger Games. Mm. I love the series. It's great. The book, the movies. It's great. Um, new ones coming out. I'm very excited. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, dude. Let's go. It's the prequel. Wait, wait. Oh, the prequel. Mm -hmm. So that's even cooler. Yeah, the book came out last year, I think. And the movie's going to be in November. Wow. But That's going to be a good movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But to me, that's like a huge theme of that series. Yeah, for sure. Um, And I think that's, even when I was a kid, I just loved it so much. I don't know. Just breaking out of that, that, that norm. You know, yeah. like really just being yourself and like, I, it, you know, when people say like, be yourself, just be yourself. Mm-hmm. I, I think because people hear it so much, it becomes like dull to their mm-hmm. ears. But it's such a powerful thing to actually think about. Like, what does it mean to be myself? Like, mm-hmm. who am I detached from whatever anyone else thinks? You know, right? it's, it's, it's some pretty, um, you got to search for that to yeah. find it, you know? Mm hmm. And, I, and for you too, like you being a leader, you being somebody who your art is constantly being taken, absorbed, broken down, maybe like looked at under a microscope. Mm-hmm. It's like, how do you, or how did you, or maybe you still go through this, handle that, you know, because to be yourself in a place where a lot of people are going to look at you and maybe mm-hmm. say, uh, like, this is okay about you, but. You should probably do this instead. Like, how, oh, yeah. how do you handle that? Uh, hold on. Mm. <laughs> Drink the water. <laughs> um, it's it can be hard. Um, but I think it it does 
you're like you're always gonna like zoom out and examine it anyways mm. Mm, that's true <laughs> like even if it's just a little bit um but like when you are examining like that situation or this person and why they're just not liking what you're putting down yeah um kind of going back to what we were just talking about is but how do you feel about it mm. but how do you feel about it but like you just always have to go back to that um because i'm i'm a person like i do care a lot about what other people think right but that can be like a huge weakness sure. as well sure so i always have to go back to like almost tunnel vision to a sense um like why are you doing this mm. Okay, boom. So why is it? What's the what's the issue? Right. Why is it? What is this relevant or not? Yeah. And then if, like, you're constantly, uh, like, just performing for everybody. Like, mm. what's the point? Mm. So mm. it's good to just stay true to your your love for things for sure. It always comes back to love when you really yeah, think about it. Absolutely. Um, because a lot of like the conflicts that will come your way is. Um, anything besides that. So you always just have to go back to, to love. And, and it's always, it's, it's interesting to think about that too, because I think at some point when people say things to you, it may come from a place of love, but mm -hmm. it doesn't feel or look like love, right. you know? And I think that was learned through other people not being loved correctly. You know, like mm -hmm. maybe I'm, I'm not a great parent and I show love to my kid by whooping their ass to make sure that they're in line. Yeah. Now, my kid thinks that that's his way of showing that that's the way to receive and give love, mm -hmm. you know, and then that just kind of spirals. And it's up to people who understand what love is to reconfigure the minds of others and be yeah. like, hey, love doesn't have to be like that. Right. You know, and like also being like, hey, let me let me take this that you're giving me. Not a fan of it. Like mm -hmm. there's some good stuff in here. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take this out. OK. And then I'm going to like throw the rest of it away. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And one thing I've learned is a lot of people just don't know how mm. yet. Mm. And you got to be very, very, very understanding of that. Yeah. Um, because a lot of times it can be like, mm -hmm. like, what, mm -hmm. what are what you are doing? You? Yeah. But then you got to be like, oh, there's mm -hmm. always a reason mm -hmm. why you're doing what you're mm -hmm. doing. And sometimes it just, you got to give people time to understand. Right how to love in the best way they can um, and get through all the shit that they went through. Right. Mm -hmm. For sure. But and it's, it's, it's kind of, I mean, that's a great perspective being there to be patient and understanding because most times they're not going to be met with that. They, mm -hmm. You know, like if they show love that way, people are always going to reject that. So they keep pushing harder. And then when yeah. they hit somebody who they're like, Hey, that was weird. Like mm -hmm. you, you good? Like, I don't see things like that. That's okay. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. Like, yeah, it's all good. It stumps the frick out of people. Like, why are you not pissed off? Like, why are you not telling me to go yeah. or whatever? And you're like, because I know you didn't mean it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did. Okay. Yeah. But you know, you're just in there. And then they catch up, you know, but they need enough of those experiences in life and someone to stand up mm -hmm. and be like, hey, it's not right. Yeah. Like, let, 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 you got to check people every once in a while, which is always a bit hard. Yeah. And the... With peace and love. With peace and love. <laughs> Check people with peace and love. That's the best way to go about it. Right. Kill them with kindness. Absolutely. That's the, that, 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 that's the way to go about anything. And speaking of kindness, so what is your biggest fear? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I got so many, but <laughs> I'm always interested in talking about it and mm. why people are afraid of, mm. especially uh, irrational fears. Mm. So I'm afraid of the ocean. Really? Yes. Why? Girl, there's so much of it. And we don't know what the hell is going on down there. This is true. Like, we know a lot. We think we know a lot until yeah. we think about the ocean. The ocean is extremely large. And we have no idea what is in there. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Like, we know about space more than the ocean. I don't know if mm. that's true. Is it? I probably shouldn't say that on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Fact, it gets taken down because it's like, um, that is not correct information. Yeah. Jessica Brown. I, I don't think that's correct at all, though. Mm. So I'm going to retract that statement. I mean, I, I feel like we would, we do a lot of research about space. I can see we where do. you're coming from. And we talk about space more than we talk about the ocean, mm. at least on my feed. I'll say that. Yeah. It, uh, in my data bank of information that I've <laughs> consumed, <what> I see. <laughs> we talk about space. We don't really care about the ocean. Yeah. 
I I'm very interested in both, by the way. Mm-hmm. But Are you scared of space? Oh yeah. Okay, so you're scared of both space and. But animation. I'm also so interested in them. Mm. But it's like put me in that. Mm-hmm. So no. Cruise would be out of the picture. No hell no. No. Uh, Can't do it. Going to space would be out of the picture. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. I'll have to make it work. Okay, because you really want to go. Yeah, if I have all the right equipment mm-hmm. and everyone's like, nah, you're solid, 110%, mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. going to be okay. Then, yeah, maybe. Okay, I- I've asked this question to some people, and it's interesting to hear their response. So, okay. Elon Musk comes up to you and he's like, hey, we're going to go to Mars. Mm-hmm. Um, casually. Casually, yeah. go to Mars. <laughs> 110%, you will be safe. Mm-hmm. Nothing will happen to you, your health, everything is going to be good. Yes. The only caveat is, it's going to be five years over time. Okay. Okay. So you come back in five years. You won't have any contact to anybody on earth, but you would get to explore space for that five year mark. Whoa. Would you do it? Yes. Mm. Absolutely. I'll be the mm. volunteer. You're like, I will absolutely be that person. For sure. Mm. Yeah. And they come back and then Earth is like, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, mm. can we go back to Mars? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate I'm to say it, yeah. but. Yeah. Okay. That's that, that, that's good to know. Yeah. And so, so your irrational fears are the ocean and space. Um, I wouldn't put space up there. Okay. It is. I mean, I feel like we all should be like, what the fuck? Right. But yeah, the ocean, um, darkness. Mm. I'm really scared of the dark. Mm. I sleep with the nightlight. Really? Yeah, I do. Not ashamed of it. Like, like, like one that plugs in? It's a little, uh, what's the word? Diffuser, but um, it lights up. Two in one. Hey, why not? Essential <laughs> oils? You got essential oils flowing in there? I do. Okay. A little nice. lavender moment. Ugh, lavender's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I fuck with, my, my two favorite are lavender and eucalyptus. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I be spraying some when I need to get into my creative mode. Or I need to like just zen out. I'm like... Yeah, feels great. Creative n- mode, nappy mode, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whatever you need. Just makes it so much better, you know. Just like it awakens you for a second. Yeah, you know when you're just kind of like numb to everything. For sure. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so, all right, ocean, the dark, bugs. Hey Google, stop. Okay, bugs. <laughs> for sure. While we're doing this, what kind of bugs? I'm so for real. I'm all of them. <laughs> you know you know nick scott is also very terrified of bugs i'm sorry nick if you don't want me to tell people that but yeah he's terrified of bugs really okay but why that's that's an irrational fear moment because i don't know mm. i do the worst idea is them crawling on me though yeah. Ooh, yeah I, see? I get, that, I get that. I get that. Hail I to the that. no. I will say butterflies, okay. Okay. I guess. Yeah. You sure. can lay on me. You can sit on me for a second. Okay. So you cool with a butterfly? Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Um, but anything else? No. Ladybug? Yeah, ladybugs are cool. Ladybug? Uh, roly poly? No. No roly polies? Nah, you can roll away from me. <laughs> Sorry. He said, roll your ass out of here. Right. <laughs> Okay, um, um, I'm trying to think of other bugs that I, I get it. I get it. It's, it's, it's like creepy crawly type stuff. Yeah. You know? Even like, I'll just, it's so annoying too. Like, it's a fear that I annoy myself with. Mm. Cause if there's a bug, like I'm like, we could be talking about something and I'm like, bro, I can't like, please kill You're it. You're like, no. And it, people get upset that I'm like, please kill it. They're like, no, but it has to live. Mm, mm-hmm. I'm like, then escort it outside? Please? Put it on a paper, put it in a cup. Yeah, because I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you ever think like, you know, I think some people will grab bugs and they're like, no, we don't want to kill it. And then they like throw it outside. Mm-hmm. But can you imagine the drop that that bug endures? Like <laughs> they fucking throw that shit like this, right? You know, they're like, it's like, 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 like here, have a good night. They're like, no, yeah, they throw it outside. And the bug is like, like inhuman like if you just scale it that's like right a 12-story building straight yeah impact you think you did something good there yeah you definitely gave <laughs> it some it. kind of trauma <laughs> he might have made it we don't know we don't know we yeah. just know that if he did he's seeing a therapist of mm-hmm. some bug sort right 
Yeah. My mom, though, she's she's a little fairy. She's like a garden fairy. Mm. And so she loves everything. It could be a spider. Oh, fuck and spiders. I'm like. Yeah. And then she's like, wait, 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 wait. And she'll get a cup, whatever. Or she'll actually sometimes just do this. And then she'll go outside. And I'm like, don't put it there because it's just going to come back in. So she'll go <laughs> like to the garden. She'll just be like. Just let it lay it down gently. Yeah. And let it walk away. Mm-hmm. A spider? Yeah. She's done that with the spider. Oh, yeah. That shit she doesn't bad. care. She's, she's just cool with that. She's, yeah, very courageous in that way. Let's go, mom. Yeah. Shout out, mom. <laughs> Shout out, mom. I, Mama lucky. I, I've been bitten by a spider before. Mm-hmm. It was not a great experience. But we won't talk about that because I, I can only just assume. Dude. What would go on in your mind. Yeah. But, okay, so so branching <laughs> off from fears, getting away from fears. Um, <laughs> I did want to ask you. Okay. Oh, you know what I really want to ask you? Okay. Okay. One, <laughs> obviously after this episode and or during the intermissions, we're going to be playing Smash um and uh she's getting smoked but the other half of it (laughs) is obviously so you game a little bit yeah because i know you've played apex before oh yeah Yeah. i I had a little apex phase okay who are you maining oh uh what was her name i haven't played in i think like a a year Mm, mm -hmm. because i didn't like i wasn't fan of the recent updates yeah yeah and, yeah um, I, yeah i think a year ago like some of the map stuff was just kind of lame and they just started adding a bunch of shit and yeah, i was like mm. I, yeah i agree with that uh the girl that like teleported wraith yes yeah wraith yeah yeah she's a good character yeah okay. i just stuck to her yeah didn't fuck with what, what do you what do you play on uh xbox xbox yeah now, how did you get into that um i had a small group of friends that played and i i was a cod girl so I was mm. really into first person shooters, but You're in those especially COD lobbies. Those things are dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I would sometimes I would get on the mic and then like five seconds later I'm like, boop. Yep. Mute them all. I think I'm I'm good. Yeah. But I was really into Black Ops mm. for sure. Mm-hmm. All the Black Ops. Mm-hmm. Um but Black Ops two is the best. Mm. First person shooter mm-hmm. ever. And so you, you were like into Black Ops and all that stuff. So then your friends are probably like, you should try Apex. And then you tried Apex and then you liked it? I did. Okay. One, I didn't really enjoy Counter-Strike or not yeah. Counter-Strike. Is that what it's called? I think, yeah. I think, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I was like, eh, it's too mm. not what I want. Yeah. And then I did try Apex and I was like, ah. And then I played more and I was like, mm. Mm. and I got addicted. Yeah. And I got really good at it. Yeah. But Yeah. That, that's one. Uh, I was a GameCube girl as a kid. Hey. I was obsessed with my GameCube. I had like a huge stack of games. Um, you still have the GameCube? No. No. I don't know where it is. I moved so many times like that, that I don't know where it it's is. It's so sad. All those games, memories. Yeah. I still have the games though. We have oh, a that's little great. Like, like pouch mm-hmm. thing. And I still have those, those games. Yeah. Did Keep you play those. GameCube? No damn no it was sad i think the first the first console i had was a dreamcast oh okay yeah the dreamcast and that that was live <laughs> that was fire I did think, you have a favorite game there um 101 dalmatians or 102 dalmatians or something like that it was lit <laughs> like it was lit I'm telling you, it was awesome. Like, you'd have these freaking, th- like, people, like, from Krilla DeVille trying to capture you. Okay, yeah. And you would have to obviously run away, and then, like, you could bark, and then you're trying to save, like, all your, your friends. Yeah. All the 101 Dalmatians. You're over here just trying to save the, <laughs> the day. The rest of the hundred. And, yeah, it, the rest of the hundred, you know? Like, I was playing the one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was awesome. I, I fucking Bro, it. you could have said, I don't... I would never have guessed that. Yeah. Out of all games. Yeah. I, I don't even know if many people know about that game. I didn't know. Yeah. That game, they had a Toy Story game. That game was lit too. I remember that, but I didn't have it. Mm. You, you had the Dreamcast? Or um, I think my brother did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't really. I was on my Smash You're on Melee. Your own. Oh, really? You, you were playing Smash from back in the day? Yes. Oh shit! <laughs> Not that that makes me any greater, because people know. still whoop my booty. But but you in Elite Smash? Just a little bit. Wait, who, who do you main? Zelda. Oh, fuck. Zelda, and then Zero Suit. But I've been really in my Zelda bag, so I haven't 
I don't really play Zero Suit as much. Okay. But Z- Zelda's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you made? Can I guess? Yeah, I would love to see you try to guess. Okay. Can I have three guesses? You can have three guesses. All right. <laughs> and I'll give you a hint if you don't get it by the second one. Okay. I will say every man that I play, mm-hmm. it's one of the two, mm-hmm. which is Ganon or DK. Mm. So I'm, I'm going to... Uh, okay. Uh, then my third one would be Ness. Nope. Can I have a fourth guess? Sure. You, you can guess 10 times. I don't think you'll get it. <laughs> really? Snake. Mm-mm. Okay. That was a... That, that, yeah, that, that was out of left field. But, but yeah, but, yeah I, I can see it. I, I did try to pick up Snake at one point. Yeah. Because I liked him in Brawl. But, uh-huh. but in the new Smash, it's not fun. Right. But, no. Mm-hmm. But... I think he's top tier. Question I think mark? he is too. Somehow, but people just don't play yeah, him. Yeah, he, you gotta like really. He's interesting of a character, but mm-hmm. maybe I should just show you whenever we okay we we we, we versus. You, now you're I'm gonna really interested. I, I, we're gonna capture your reaction to it too. Okay, now I feel like I know. What is it? Duck hunt. Nope. Peach. Nope. <laughs> Daisy. <laughs> This is just going to make it so much better because when you actually find out the character, you're going to be like, what the fuck? Oh, I'm so excited now. Okay. I'll wait. I'll okay. wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We can wait. We can wait. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> Bruh, we, we, went, we were in some, some good bags of conversation. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess let's, let's go ahead and, 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 and wrap up and talk about um, any advice. I feel like because you're, you are a great leader and in all the things that you do, you're very like, you're very aware mm. in, in those aspects. So I think that um, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who will go a couple different routes, but one wants to get into dance? Ooh. Um, find out the genre that speaks to you the most. Mm. That's a big thing. Mm. Um, and really insert yourself into that world. Mm. I feel like that's a huge part of it, especially like if you're a guest to that culture, Mm -hmm. it's so important, but Mm -hmm. just period inserting yourself into that world fully, Mm. whether it's house, whether it's hip hop, whether it's, I don't know, tap, yeah, (laughs) whatever, um, surround yourself with that community, Mm. with any community you can find and just be in that because mm. it, it is kind of hard to be from the outside all the time right it is it is great to know yourself as as um as a person as yeah. a dancer and kind of be comfortable in your in your solitude in that way mm-hmm. but kind of making the time to go support others mm. uh go to events find parties mm. uh go to classes mm. Find groups in those classes. Hey, mm. y'all want to go to another class? Like, yeah. Anything you can do to just like be in that world, you're. It's good it's things will happen. A lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you find yeah, some li- yeah. like lifelong friends that way too. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For okay. sure. That's that's amazing advice. And now, um, I would say, what is some advice for getting out of your comfort zone? Hmm. it's so simple and like but so hard just do it (laughs) just do it it's easy um but dropping um uh the whole validation addiction Mm. that's a good one thank you (laughs) Mm. because we are addicted to it and it's Mm -hmm. a lot of it isn't our fault Mm -hmm. but take it Mm -hmm. a minute put it down yeah put it down do it for the love of doing it (laughs) yeah and then also just yeah put down er everyone else's thoughts especially if you're learning something bro Mm. Mm -hmm. don't just stay true to you yeah do your best Mm -hmm. um yeah the right people will will come along and be more um give you what you need yeah but yeah Drop, dropping that addiction can be can be really helpful. Mm. Like, yeah. That's amazing. Okay. Thanks, the the next next question I have 
mm. is what does it mean to create yourself? Wait, what does it mean to you? Hmm. I think you said it beautifully earlier. <laughs> oh, he's going to knock down that light. <laughs> One sec. <laughs> if he does. Oh, he's sitting on the <laughs> Oh, did he hear something? Yeah, he hears something. Okay. He's, he's, he's very vocal. Period. Oh, well, Hughes, um, what does it mean to create yourself? That's a hard question. Mm. To you, or, or, or what about this? Like, mm. how have you created yourself? Mm. Um, I think by seeing what lights a fire within you, mm. um, exploring that. And kind of what I just said about inserting yourself in that world. It's mm. kind of like that's mm -hmm. always a really good order. Yeah. Um, and then just kind of staying on track to what, like, it's really all comes down to your purpose. Like yeah, finding your purpose. For sure. And then just following that. Yeah. Because there's so many things that will come along the way to, like, knock you off yeah. that course. Yep. And so if you, if you really use all your passions, mm -hmm. all your efforts, mm -hmm. go back to what reminds you of that. Right. That's a huge part. Um, and then just keep it pushing. Yeah. Then uh, you'll create the best version of yourself, I feel like. Hey. Yeah. Hey, that's what's up. Yeah. I, I, I love that answer. And I think that Thank you've you. done that really well. And you've created some amazing things. Um, unity yourself as a freestyler now, like, like or a battler, um, Thank you. All, all the stuff that you've been doing is, is awesome. And I think that it's impacted a lot of people. So keep it pushing, keep inspiring people. Um, you as well. Thank you. And yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. um, other than that, let them know where to find you. Okay. My Instagram is Jesse Brownies as mentioned mm -hmm. before. Um, that's kind of where I keep it. Yep. Keep everything. Yep. Yeah, Team page where, where we find. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. My team page <laughs> is u dot n dot i dot t dot y dot official. Oh, u n i t y official. Official. Just, and don't forget yeah. the official because they are official. official. Mm. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. And like always, love yourself, be yourself, and create yourself. And, uh, Either the next clip or somewhere in intermission, you'll see us play Smash and Miss Jessica will find out oh. <laughs> what character we play. Yo. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Let's get it. Yo. I'm like, fun. I probably got makeup on here. I did. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, that's real good.